everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Intellectual Kink. Hi. How are you? I'm 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 all right. I'm uh, all right. I'm Insidious Muse. And I'm Service Slut. We have some guests. We do have some guests. We have Sanger, Odd Access Jana. Hello. And we have the lovely Mistress Lily. Lily of the Valley. Lily of the Valley. And we Although have not truly from the Valley, obviously. Yeah, but it, I that's said, I, I, did, I did actually grow up in the Valley. Right. I which, remember wondering. when I named her that? She said, oh, I'm from the Valley, so that works. She's still on my phone as Lily of the Valley, by the way. <laughs> Even though I actually know, like, all of her name. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Trust. Um, and we have a couple <laughs> other people trust. coming. Um, today's going to be a little bit of a different show. We originally had some guests to come on that we're going to talk about um, Japanese rope and Japanese rope art. Uh, as well as a pretty well-known Japanese rope artist from Japan. Uh, and we are going to reschedule them for a month because we have some pretty uh, serious news that happened in our community. There was a wonderful woman that has been on our show many times um, by the name of Fauna, and she suddenly passed away last night. And that sucks. Um, but we really, really wanted to take this time to celebrate her, and I'm totally not going to get teary the entire show, I promise. Um, because, and I'm saying um because I'm nervous, because she, for anybody who remembered her on the show, she's fantastic, and she's wonderful. Uh, and so this is our way of remembering her. I could not have done a show that was not involving her today, because that would have just been really rude. No. So um, that's what I have to say about that. Yeah. So. And I don't have tissue. Oh, you know, oh no. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. It's my own fault. The That's booth cool. is running. They're looking for tissue. It'll be okay. It's my own fault. It's I think fault. I have tissue, but I think when the booze is flowing, you don't really need tissue. It's true. She won't. It'll all blend. Why? Tears and vodka will all right. be one. So as yeah. as the lovely singer pointed, pointed out, uh, um, Fauna's uh, liquor of choice was vodka. So we have some vodka on the way. Yes. So we can. Uh, totally because in on. LA you can get. You can. And we had we had vodka at happy hour beforehand. Thank yes. you, Jenny. Thank you so much. Hooray, Booth. So, Engineer. Yay. <laughs> so this 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 came as a shock because as far as Because we it's all, a shock. Because it's a shock. We saw her. We, we just saw yeah. her. You know? Um but not just that. She was young. You know, she just turned forty. That's fucking young. Yeah. And for all intents and purposes, she was healthy. Mm -hmm. I, I just, there's, it just doesn't, it baffles me. And active. And very active. She would walk dogs. And man, that woman could beat a woman, a person, a man too. I, I would like to point out that it's like our year anniversary, our anniversary, seven, July, July 17th. I met you both, but I met Fauna that day because you beat the shit out of me. So I I'm would pounding. love for you to tell the story because... Sanger's story of how she met Fauna is truly indicative of the kind of person that Fauna was. Um, this this is something Fauna does to everybody. Yes. 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 And, no. and, and, but to give Sweet. everyone a little bit of uh, background on Fauna. Mm. So Fauna um, can't even, and words won't even really describe what her impact was on the community. So she... Impact, but... Um. So she was the um, coordinator for the Threshold Society, which, as a lot of us know, is a very long-standing. Um, cheers! Cheers! Thirty-one years older than Nancy, as Fauna pointed out on this show. It is a nonprofit dedicated to the education and the support of BDSM. Yes, and so she she was a coordinator, which means you know head honcho in charge, making shit happen, making people do stuff. <laughs> Um, buzzing. She <laughs> was she was nominated for um, she was nominated at rather Southland Honors 2014 for the Jeff Berman Community Service Award, and I remember when this happened. She was so she didn't she was so beside what? herself. She was she was floored. Mm -hmm. Like she's like what me what what, me? what did I I Cause me? <laughs> she was also one of the founding members of the Dom Scout troop of of which most of us in this room are a member of. <laughs> And she, which is kinky Girl Scouts, if you guys don't know, yeah, and it's <laughs> fucking awesome. And and, and she, I'm not her friend. philosophy was was you know, but that's your choice. It is my. I'm fine with that. <laughs> but she, you know, yeah. she all she wanted was to spread edu education. She wanted she wanted to take over the world with that fucking troop. So when she started Dom Scouts, um, it was all about look, 
everybody needs help. Mm -hmm. Everybody can learn something. I don't care who you are or what you are. And her entire idea was, look, we're going to look, we're going to earn these goofy, obnoxious badges like Girl Scouts have on a sash, but they're going to be kinky and they do actually have kinky badges. And we're going to do it together. I don't care if you've been caning or paddling or flogging for 20 years. You're going to earn this fucking badge with us. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's what happened. And you cannot understand how bonding of an experience that is with a group of people. Even, I even when you're like, Shh, you know, nobody can be like, I, I know everything. And that's that's the premise. That's what makes Dom Scout so effective is that mm-hmm. everybody's like, oh, I don't know everything. I can learn. Hello, I silenced Hello. mine. Oh, sorry. Are I'm you? Sorry. Um, is that booze? No, it's not booze, oh. unfortunately. Um, I think also the wine is good, though. Thank you for the wine. You're welcome. And, <laughs> yes. I would you please endear us with with your story? Okay, so it, it is a <clears throat> fantastic story. My the tiny tiny preface is I've been active in kink a very long time, but it came back to LA solo, and I took my time getting. And I oh mm, oh, there's this lot of things going on. Didn't do it. Didn't do it. Suddenly, like fuck it, I'm just going to do it. And I went out to a midweek party that was only for women at the time. And I I almost couldn't do it because there was no way to get in. I didn't know how to get in. The other There were two other people driving up and I thought, oh, I got a place kind of cool. Hey, you guys going to some kind of party? Hello. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to this kinky. Oh, okay, great. We got this. All right. So you don't know what to keep it on the down low. We go in and everyone's kind of huddled in the chick- kitchen. The chicken. They the are kitchen. huddled deep inside the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That's another euphemism for fisting. Yeah. For fisting. <laughs> and I, I don't even know what's going. What do I do? Um, party, party, party. I got this. I got this. And I figure, like, fuck it. I got nothing to lose. I could get rejected. I couldn't. I don't care. But I walk it. I mean, the. I see this woman who just reminds me i mean all i think of is mountain like she had her fucking feet on the ground and she's just not pla- like yep there's six people here <laughs> and they're kind of doing the oh my name is and i'm this kind of kinky and i'm this very involved and i have these many different titles uh, not titles but um identity uh, identifications rather and i was like a um, masochist i uh, want to get Fucked up. Who can help? You know, like I, I wanted to get across the point that I was, I knew my shit and I could play and I knew how to throw down and, and I. It's been a while. Could somebody help me out? You know, but um, hi, babe. We have two. We, we have, have two, two more. Who more just enjoyed us, ladies who have joined, Lizzie, and Lizzie and Birdie. Birdie, do you not? Oh yeah. Oh, you can't. We can't. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. So that was July 17th last year, like almost right now. Stun- it just, wow, holy shit. And she's, you know, and I remember her saying on this show, like, I remember that night. I had no give a fuck, you know, and she didn't. And it was so awesome because she walked by me and I kind of tug on her sleeve and I say, hey, hey, can I see your toy bag? And it was on. And I think we fucked about four Two, three hours. I mean, it was amazing. And of course, it's like my first dance back and, you know, getting getting it going. And I'm so, fuck yeah. But, not but, and rather. And you hit me. And you hit me. And you hit me. And you hit me. me. (laughs) What? So there's a sidebar to your story. Oh, my. The the other perspective of that. Do tell. So um, we knew about this party. I don't know if it was the first of this but it was fairly early on in this when they did this midweek on women's party but that happened to be the same night we used to do intellectual kink Mm -hmm. and we were like the party starts at like eight or nine and we're like the show is over at ten yeah you know whatever the party ends at night it's not anywhere convenient to our homes at all but we're like all right we're gonna go to this party we were not we were not super crazy about going to the party but we were going because we wanted to support our sisters that was the big thing we wanted to support our sisters so we went to the party cruising by, you know, do the obligatory walk by all the rooms, see what's going on, go to the kitchen, and then walk by out. And I walk out, and Fauna is beating this this lady in, in the purple room. <laughs> and Fauna That's goes... Me. And Fauna goes, Mistress! But she says my real name, because she knows my real name. <laughs> and then she says, she says, come here, come here, this chick can take anything! <laughs> I'm fucking exhausted! <laughs> Spanker, hit her, hit her, hit her! 
And it I was, was like, a oh, great we'll night. Take it. And it wasn't even an option. Like, I had to hit her. I was like, well, okay, okay, I'll come and hit her. And then I remember getting up to you and, like, I was touching you. And then I kind of leaned into you. I was like, is it all right if I hit you? <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> And so then I got to spank Sanger and it was just, and, and that's not the only time that Fauna had yeah. done that with me. There'd been other times where she's like, oh, come, come, do CBT on my boy with me. Let's do this. Let's." And she loved that collaborative mm. kind of thing. Yeah. She would get so excited, like a puppy dog. She would get <gasps> so excited like a puppy oh, dog about these things. So many times. And it was the cutest thing. It was just, she had such a huge heart. She, just, she wanted she to share all of the joy. And that's really what Aww. it came down to, is that she felt so happy about whatever she was doing. And she wanted you to have just as much fun as she was having. <laughs> and she just wanted to make everyone enthusiastic about it. It was infectious, really. I think Absolutely. for her, it was, oh shit, this is fun. Oh shit, that's fun too. And she <laughs> talks about like, God, no, never needles. Are you fucking nuts? And wait a minute. What? I'll just give it a taste. That's right. And then suddenly like, which is kind of on the same track as the CBT. Like, oh, wait, if you poke this, it might be okay. You know, if yeah. you pull that and, oh, wait, I've got this cage and wait, there's sounds and just oh, that cage. like, I know, I know. If anyone can find the cage. I'll it, pay money for it. I want it so bad. But let's hear from some ladies that, that just joined us. Hello, ladies. Oh, no. Oh, you're on a radio show and you know what I'm talk? What? Really? I'm, I'm being cool. silly. It's all right. A little bit silly. She's just what? here sharing in the love. Share the love. We have alcohol coming if you'd like some of it. Yeah. <sighs> Lizzie, Lizzie is actually having a fauna moment. Aww. Right? She is. Fauna, fauna was big love, big heart, and an mm. easy cry. Oh, my God. She was. She was. <laughs> and she giggled. Like, so, I'm crying. <laughs> on our drive over, I was... Cracking oh. stupid jokes and crying simultaneously. <laughs> you kind of got a, what the fuck just I know, happened? Exactly. And what I the said, fuck just happened? And I said, I said, I'm a horrible human. I literally am crying, ugly crying. I'm a horrible person because I'm laughing. Ah, you know, like I'm a horrible human being, right? And, um, and Nancy goes, you know, Fawn would want us to do that too. And I said, but she wouldn't be able to crack a joke. She gets too emotional. <laughs> <laughs> And then it made me cry worse because what kind of a horrible person says that? But you know, and, and you didn't say anything untrue. No, I didn't. But it wasn't mean either. Yes. No, and, and and the truth was that, and I told you, had she been the one crying, yeah, she probably would have been able to crack jokes. But she would have relied on you to crack jokes. That's true. She totally would have. That's true. Anyway. <gasps> Because it sucks. What the fuck just happened is really what's going on. It's okay. You know, I say this to other people that are grieving when it's not me grieving. And I say, grief is for the living. Grief is about us. It's totally. not about them. It's about us. And it's still okay. I know. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. It isn't. It's a thing and it has to happen. But it's about us. And I've I've discovered that the bigger impact on us when we grieve has everything to do with how we empathized and related with the person that passed. And Fauna was the kind of person that everybody empathized with her on some level. So, and I was saying this earlier to Nancy, there's going to be a massive hole in our community. We've had a lot of deaths in the last couple of years. For fucking real, dude. But I can't think of one that's going to leave the kind of hole that this will. It's just a true statement. You described this this family <laughs> on our way over here, and I want you to tell everyone so, who she was in this family. So Ms. D is the matriarch. Mm. Fauna is the big sister mm. that um, bosses everybody around and makes them do stuff, and they fucking hate her, but they love her at the same time. <laughs> Like sisters are. And as is the little sister that, has, does, that does things the big sister does, but she fucking gets pissed off at her big sister all the time because of oh, it. Oh, we love you. We love you. We love you as. It's true. No, I love her so much, but it's true. And then like any of the other boards, when it was when it was Phil, Phil was the, the brother that kind of like sloughed her off like, ah, that's Fauna, you know? And, and then, did it anyway. And did it anyway because you did what your big sister told you to do. And that's just kind of who Fauna's always been before she was even a board member, before she was, you know, and, and it's not even just in Threshold, it's just in our community. Which is she, why community service awards come. All right. And it's one nominees, of those. Nominations. That's, 
that's now our family is missing a big sister. And that sucks. I think on the thing you said about grief being in, about us, and I think the, the, it's hard to say, uh, yes, this is about me right now. I am bummed to fuck out because I'm. it's about me. But by the same token, it's still like the truth. Like, and this is a time to speak that truth, right? Um, and the hard thing about sudden, the sudden, just, wait, what? I, I mean, I'm going to, I clocked out from work after two hours. Fuck this. I, I'm not going to work today. You know, like, fuck this entirely. Like, I saw my phone ringing. I'm like, she doesn't call me. Something's wrong. And I answer the phone. What's wrong? And I it, saw that and I was like, but I was, my I, boss was literally right next to me. And I'm like, oh. Deal with it later. Yeah. I mean, I walked into my chief's office and I said, "I just said, what's up?" He's like, "You need time, take it." And I'm like, I'm just, "Yeah." But the sun is just a gut kick. Yeah. It's just a gut kick. So, for those of you that are listening and and want to call in and share your own stories, it has to own, be a fun story, please. I it will has cut to you the fuck story. off if it's not good. We're good. We're, we're, we're easy to say mood. fuck off. We can totally say, and so, a funny one. The number no. is 800-893-9562. We call. Um, you can also tweet us at the show if um, if you don't want to call in, but um, and somebody should probably call in and talk about what happened at Carnal Carnival. Oh my yes. god! <gasps> I want to talk about it now. I'm looking at you, <laughs> people at Brian's house. <laughs> <laughs> oh please! Oh, I want to look at those pictures. I want to hope that video's there. I there's, have a photo of me when I put the pie in. Her you face. were <gasps> awful. You oh. were so bad. See, I was so okay. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, everybody, let's there's get this. There's a in every massacre. At at Who threshold. Shot? Threshold, which is a nonprofit, therefore they 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 need fundraising and they need another way in order to support they all of their outreach do. programs. So um, one of their fundraisers that they they do every year is called Carnal Carnival. Funny, right? Right. Um, and at this particular event, which was what two weeks ago, a week and a week ago, it was a week and a half week ago, ago Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's no, two weeks ago it was. Um, how? No, the ask. 12. She, um, Fauna, volunteered for people to make donations so that they could, um, it's called splashing, right? They could splash her, <laughs> uh, which for those who don't know is messy food play. So then she was in a pair of biker shorts and a bra in a kiddie pool <laughs> with goggles on <laughs> and she had whipped cream pies put on her chocolate syrup ketchup you paid um, to get mustard, to participate oh my uh, god that's perfect uh, 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 cheerios oatmeal oat bran honey uh prune juice was there ketchup yeah, there was ketchup and, and she I was, almost you can vomited call it a culinary assault it was oh. yeah, it was, she, yeah. it was and, and she was everywhere her breasts and and she was her face and her hair and it was until she was broken <laughs> She was broken. She her body, her body language. She was like, Ooh, she was totally slumped over. And oh, you broke her. See, was, I didn't give any money because I thought she hated it so much. And she's like, what the fuck? After she got drugged to the shower, so <laughs> she can clean. Shower only has cold water. I think. I saw her at the night, and she didn't even smell bad, which was surprising. And her hair looked surprisingly <laughs> lustrous, which That's makes amazing. me think perhaps ketchup is good for the hair. Okay. And um. And she was just all smiles. Like she said, she's like, it was fun. She's like, everybody had a good time. There was no malice to it. It was just. There was just ketchup was, and, and prune juice. And apparently was that was laughing. foul. The prune juice. Who comes up with this Hell shit? Of a, pizza, by the way. <laughs> a sub? <laughs> a sub. <laughs> Says Nancy. <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. But it was a, a scene that everybody got to participate in, whether you actually did or didn't. And that's the kind of thing that Fauna did. Not just mm -hmm. that scene, but like other things where she really believed in incorporating as many people as possible. She was very all-inclusive to the point that it used to drive me crazy. As a co-leader <laughs> of Dom Scouts, oh. I am constantly that evil HR bitch that says, no, why? And she's just like, but everybody deserves a chance. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> you know, because I'm the bitch and she's the nice person. <laughs> but that's a, not but a I bad think problem nice for her to comes have. from like, well, I wouldn't want to get that note sent to me. Oh, are you? Oh, da-da-da-da. So check out that picture on the camera. Fuck yeah, Birdie. 
was so much That's, fun. Who, who took that? As took that. If Fuck you yeah, can as. probably look as at Birdie's Rock tits, the shell <laughs> that she has as well, simultaneously while you're looking at Fauna, I think that that would be good for everybody. <laughs> Birdie's holding my hand. I am. Hi, Birdie. Two masochists. Oh, and I know. Together. <laughs> can we come together sometime? Let's do it. All right. I'm Nancy? For it. <laughs> oh, you got hey. two fists. I have two <laughs> hands for lube. <laughs> This Double fisting, here it is. We could we could note Fauna the best fisting doula. Oh my god! She's so I remember doula. I remember she when was, we we fisted here, Sammy. Yes, right there, in fact. And um, right, here. and and this, I was this over there. And the the concept <laughs> to being the fisting doula was very foreign to Fauna. It's, to everybody, it's to everybody, a strange really. concept, right? And so, and she, you know, she gloved up. <laughs> She gloved up. She it, took it, that shit seriously. She took it so seriously. It was awesome. And so she uh um so she gloved up and she had the lube, but she she had her hands up like a fucking surgeon and she was ready. She was ready and she was very attentive and and I she's think a, she's a way better fisting doula than me and, and I had done like, it before. I was the I was the play by player this time because it was on the show, right? And then um and I, and I, she I, was this was a different time. Oh, I know, but it's still funny. Oh, and, and so I'm doing the play-by-play, -play and da, da da da. But it was one of those. She's she was just like she took. She was serious. Do you need more lube? She was right on it. Awesome. You started rubbing. She started rubbing Sammy's leg and everything. She did. She's all about oh. calming them. Oh, oh yeah. Whereas hey. I'm like, I have a dildo. Can we stick it in her ass? <laughs> <laughs> and the bottom's like, no. I'm like, God damn it. I remember one time you you lent me to her because she was going to do uh, a humiliation class. Or femme right. fatale. And I couldn't be there. And you couldn't be there. And I was wow. really nervous because I I don't, I just, I've never done but to other people. I've never had her be like, go and do this thing for someone else. But I trusted Fauna. Oh. I totally trusted her. And so, <laughs> and I remember it was a very, you know, it, it, it was splashy. Uh, it was very splashy. Oh, that's <laughs> very it. splashy. Splash. Um, Not splooshy. Oh, splashy. Oh, splashy. Right. Um, but she was very, uh, um, very much all business, right? When it came to teaching something, she was, you know, she was always a goofball, but she always was very much like, this is what it is. And I remember feeling a little bit nervous and, and right before the whole thing, the actual demo part of it started, you know, she looks at me and she's like, are you ready? Mm. Very calm. <laughs> she knew I was, she knew. Was a little, a little. Just a little bit. And and then and then it was awesome. And then it was there's so much awesome. And then afterwards, you know, she took me to, you know, go hose me off and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Which was also the awesome. Awesome right. all around. But you know, having that constant um care for someone else. Always thinking about somebody else before herself. Well, she was definitely the epitome of like a responsible top. Mm. You know, I I had a, a really like pretty like traumatic incident happened to me at the beginning of the year and I had to take a break from playing. And um, when I felt like I was finally ready for it, she was the second person that I played with. Mm. And we had never played and it was very impromptu and we did our negotiations and my whole thing was like, I knew that afterwards I would need aftercare and I just needed like someone to take care of me, you know, and not feel abandoned. Um, we had the most fantastic scene. Mm -hmm. Like, same thing. I had her, like, sweating and panting. And she's like, oh, my God. <laughs> girl take. What's happening? You know, and I'm sitting there <laughs> laughing, laughing my ass off. I need to go to my noises. And she's like, she's so happy. She's like, look at your noises. You're amazing. I love this. And it was like, I felt so confident. And she was the first person to cut punch me. And it oh, was fuck. Just, yeah. She started, she started oh. going there. And I was like, oh. I think we had the most wonderful scene though and she was like she was amazing and beautiful and so supportive and even though she was there like doing her thing and her status was coming out and it was wonderful but she was like she knew what had happened to me and no matter what she was taking care of me I think that the saying that what you said was as her as a responsible top and that you like committed to negotiating prior to just jumping into this mm -hmm. thing that was my experience too and and i think that's a, a like a clinical thing maybe that people skip and that she was dedicated the new person haven't played before let's make this work out 
because and your fantastic scene and my fantastic scene with her my first time playing with her not that none of the other ones were but mm -hmm. certainly who the fuck is this little girl that showed up and what does she want and she okay i'll hit her for so long. yeah but i think the negotiation thing that she mm -hmm. like yes i'm gonna do that and you and I she both. She was very good at creating a very positive experience. It wasn't like, okay, so now we're going to, like, what do you hate? What do you like? Mm -hmm. What do you, you know? I mean, she was, let's do this, how, you know, kind of by the books. Mm -hmm. And and your fantastic scene came from that communication. And that is seriously legacy. Like, that's something that will stick around. Well, that's a legacy, but it's not just about being a responsible top. She was responsible top to the community right she really so was. she made dom scouts part mm -hmm. of her commitment to dom scouts was community service mm -hmm. everybody has to give back you don't just get to come and take you have to give back you have to teach you have to volunteer your time and i think when you talk about the whole to the community that's sort of that's a really big one and i think mm -hmm. if she was here she would say yeah so i'm not around so now it's up to all of you to step up Right? Well, you know, it's funny because, like, I talked to a lot of people today um, in my circle who never met her, but they had all heard of her. Like, and they knew exactly what kind of void, you know, she was leaving. Yeah. And they just, they just knew. And those who even knew her briefly, same thing. They were just like, what? You know, it's, it's, uh, uh, she, even if you didn't know her, you knew her. And you knew of her, and mm -hmm. it sort of behooves everybody to emulate those qualities. She's not around, but she's left behind uh, a lot of qualities that we all want to emulate and Big should. fucking clown shoes to fill. <laughs> <laughs> My last photo with her was her and her clown makeup. Right? Which I loved, because I love clowns. I hate clowns. And I loved her. And I still love her. <laughs> She was a terrifying clown. She was amazing. There I, oh, is I love no clowns. such thing as a non-terrifying clown. <laughs> I love so. clowns, but she's sadistic clowns. And she was so good. Yeah. I loved her. I just wanted to hug her and pinch her little clown cheeks. <laughs> the first time I saw Fauna, I didn't know it was Fauna because she mm -hmm. was in her clown suit. <laughs> and I walked into Threshold and there was this big blonde <laughs> clown standing there. And I'm a pretty brave person, but I walked in and I went, ah, ah. I don't know. <laughs> That's pretty terrifying. She was amazing. So, um... There was a boy who wanted to serve Fauna. And um, she gave him very specific direction to get a cupcake, a specific kind of cupcake, <laughs> a very simple cupcake, a white cupcake with white frosting and sprinkles. That's it. Very, very simple. He showed up with a dozen super duper fancy cupcakes from a super duper fancy cupcake store. Not one of which was a white cupcake with white frosting Holy crap. and sprinkles. And she <laughs> said, up. what does this do for me? This is not service. This is showing off, which is not what I asked for. So sent him away in shame. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know how much lo longer later... He apparently begged for a chance to come and, and begged for her forgiveness. Could he please do it right this time? She said, this is it. It's your last chance. So you can't fuck this shit up. Um, and so he brought in this huge white cake cupcake with white frosting and those like dot like sprinkles. They look like little confetti. <laughs> And I have never seen somebody so happy to eat a boring fucking cupcake <laughs> in my life. Fauna was so happy. And I don't think it was about the cupcake. Aww. I think it was because he listened. He learned. He he followed directions. Mm -hmm. And it was it was just so entertaining. And I'll never forget the white fucking cupcake with the white goddamn frosting and the fucking sprinkles. Which was the birthday cupcakes. Um. Which I fucked up. Which she fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> that was supposed to be the birthday cake. Because I was like, remember what kind of cupcake she likes. And every, and every sub's like, well, everybody likes chocolate. Well, apparently not. <laughs> That's not <laughs> I would like to speak for the gluten-free of us. The gluten-free. No cupcakes. How about not that I'm a dom, but... Cotton candy? Like no sugar. I, no sugar. Well, but that's gluten-free. Please bring bacon. No, I'm not a dom. It's okay. Bacon. Bacon. Lily of the Valley. She, yes. she, likes, with me. she likes salami. Yeah. <laughs> I do like my, my meat. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I ate a pound of that burger, and you only ate a half. 
That's, I got talked out of it. I I am very easily influenced. The whole mother. If you you really did. I got a little tiny tiny thing. Sanger, it was really hot to watch. I'll eat it again. <laughs> and um, it was stuffed with cheese. It was stuffed with peppers. No, I don't know. Friend, what the it, fuck it, else was it stuffed no, with? No, if you want the best burger on the planet, then you need it, to go to the Outlaw Cafe. That's where Outlaw we were. Cafe, we, that's where we were. The Outlaw Cafe in Van Nuys. The best you fucking burger you'll ever get. You watch me too, but only Lily thinks it's hot. Is that what you're saying? So they are not our sponsors of why I... <laughs> we just like them. We're I can talking name all about sorts of food places. Hot, if you're hot interested. beef injection. Hot beef by the pound. <laughs> or something. Anyway, if your dom says no gluten, no sugar, don't bring her a fucking cupcake. It's true. It's true. Or, or if they're or vegetarian, don't back bring them bacon. To what? <laughs> bacon is the gateway meat. It's fine. It is. No, it's not <laughs> fine. fine. It, that's why it's the so least what? You know, sometimes we put bacon in chocolate. Split, expressed is said, negotiate and mm-hmm. find out. It's true. It's before all about the you fucking bring the cupcake. It's all about it, communication. Like all of your shows. It's true. All of our shows, the root, the root is communication. She always liked coming on the show. She lo- she See, when came on the, the show. You know what? So just- Last weekend I said, hey, when do you want to come on the show? And I, we even talked about it. She goes, oh, I have a board meeting. Oh, all right. Well, next time. Definitely. We got to get you on the she show. She was the head of the shit. Why didn't she just rearrange the gun? No, I'm just kidding. A little bit. <laughs> I think because she was being courteous to the other board oh, members. Oh, sorry, other board men- members. <laughs> so, um... So it looks like Ferdy brought an instrument to play. Ferdy brought. <gasps> I you- brought. I brought my ukulele Aww. because Fauna used Fauna played the ukulele, Aww. and we used to talk about playing the ukulele together. We never actually got to, but Ooh. I used to bring it to the club sometimes. Are you tuned up? And could you play something for I, us? I probably am tuned up. Let me check Do you out. need more mics? Our friend Birdie is uh, aptly named Birdie because she is a songbird. So <laughs> that's a uh, you know. Safe. That is a, that is secondary to why she is here. That works. Okay. Um, let me bring up some lyrics because I care. Yeah, about I'm bit, I'm bad at that too. Yeah. <laughs> Careful, um, the mics can't be too close. Oh, oh sorry. You'll get feedback. This so is the ukuleles are very small. You realize? <laughs> I'll hold it over here. I play left-handed, so it works out. Um, I believe you. <laughs> I'm not the one vibrating, it's but still, somebody else still, is. I am not. Is that a phone vibrating. or the feedback? Or it's is, vibrating. Is it's not me. Inside of somebody. <laughs> Did the phone fist somebody? Right. <laughs> it does sound like it's oddly far away, in some cavernous oh. hole. She said hole. Wow. Some holes are less cavernous than others. This Jeez, Birdie. It doesn't this have to anything to do with morality. Tweet, tweet, Birdie. <laughs> All right. Let's see if this will work. Oh shit! Sorry. I oh, that's okay. Them. Seriously. That's Okay. Fuck you. Pull in a china shop. Best God, no, we can't take wrong. Sanger anywhere. No, we really can't. Can. Fuck off. Can drag her places. No, you're not. Yes. Nobody's running a thing. All right. Um, my phone's locked. What? Out, so I... What? Your phone locked? Hmm? What do you need? I'm just going to prop it up really quick. Oh, I was going to hold it for you. Oh, thank you. My goodness. So helpful. Does it... She's a helpful Honda guy. <laughs> Does it... Doing this I'm good. crying. Okay. You're good. <laughs> so are you. Oh, thank you so much. Stop talking. <laughs> um, this is for Fauna. Wherever she is. Hopefully here with me. Playing her ukulele next to me. So there are the chords. Look over my shoulder. For you There'll be no more I'm not- 
never be cold Cause I feel that when I'm with you It's alright I know it's alright Song birds are singing like they know the score, and I love you, I love you, I love you like never before, and the song birds are singing like they know the score and I love you I love you I love you like never before So because everyone here is really crying, I'm going to remind everyone of a story Fama told on this show about listening to a couple fuck. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Best, <laughs> funnest story ever. And she was I like. I think about her every morning. But <laughs> because of that. Because I hear them every morning. <laughs> So she talks. We're out of focus. Look at that. How do we get back in focus? Um, oh, they'll do it. Hi, thank you, focus. Booth. So Fauna, sitting in this chair, tells a story, and I can't do it nearly the justice she does. But the moral of the story, the beautiful couple she thought were having. No. No. You're no. telling it wrong. You're telling it wrong. I know. I just said no. I was going to tell it wrong. Fauna, I will tell the story See then. how I changed <laughs> that up and everyone's giggling and fucking me off and shit like that. So Fauna lives in an apartment and upstairs from her lived this great big black guy and this little teeny tiny Asian girl. And he always imagined what sex was like with the two of them. And one morning she wakes up and she's in her bed and she's lying there and she hears this sound. She's like... <laughs> and she's so, like, they're getting it on. <laughs> and so she's like, oh. So she, uh, you know gets out her stuff and starts uh, doing her thing by herself and she's like yeah and she's like they're keep going and like there's like come on yeah yeah and she's and totally getting giving and, it well, to and, her and, yeah, and it's keep, I, keep going mm, yeah. mm, mm. and so Fauna has her beautiful masturbation moment and she has an <laughs> orgasm she's like oh that's nice and then when she's done she still hears a sound she's like god damn they're still going <laughs> shit man it was true what they say about black guys and little <laughs> and little Asian girls, and um, and so <laughs> she's she's sitting there and listening and still hearing it, and slowly it starts dawning on her, there's nothing changing about the sound. <laughs> what, what is it? And then she realizes that it is in fact morning doves outside her window <laughs> making the sound to which she just masturbated. <laughs> Oh, best it, story ever. It was funny. It, it was looks like we have a call. We do. We have, have a call. Hello. Hello. Hi. You're you're Hi. on the you're on the phone. Who's this? Who who do we have this the is, pleasure? This is Lady Shiva. Hi, Hi Shiva. Shiva. Hi. Wow, that was really good. That we also that was all Charlie's girlies. Angels like. That was very that was great. Girl. Good job, guys. Next time we'll do it in harmony. No, we won't. That's, Not me. She was, she was, she was, she was. That was pretty well done. That was pretty well We're done. Fucking <laughs> out of line. Um, we'd love to hear. And Az is here too. Hi, Az. Hi, Az. Hi, Az. Mm. Say hi. <laughs> hi, little sister. Oh. <laughs> hi, guys. It's Az. Hi. We love you. We so, love you too. do you have a fauna You're story? Be drunk. We'll be there momentarily. <laughs> we will. <laughs> We're spending the night, FYI. <laughs> okay. Uh, She's got floor. So, and so Shiva, did you have something you wanted to share about Fauna? I did. I did. Um, there was a... Can you guys hear me okay? I'm on speaker. Go right. No problem. Okay, great. Um, 
I mean, there's so many to choose from. Honestly, it was really Fauna that got me back into the scene. You know, she was always so happy to see me and so encouraging and she never said no to me and she always made me feel like everything I ever wanted to do was totally possible and that I could do it and in that time that was literally like the thing I needed the most but on a on a really you know sexy note um I think my favorite fauna moment is it was at a party one night and it was pretty late it was like almost two in the morning party was almost over Mm -hmm. And I walk by, I think it's the medical room, and I see her gesturing like she's fucking a guy in the ass with, like, a dildo. I look down, and it's a big metal cock. It's big. And she's just going to town on this dude. <laughs> and I am like, holy shit, what the fuck? So I triple take, and I, like, lodge myself between the doorway to watch. <laughs> As you do. And she must have heard me because she turns around and looks at me and I think, oh, you know, I was about to be like, oh, I'm sorry I interrupted you. But she was never like that. And she just puts this wicked grin on her face and does like a big thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> and I, nice. I thumbs up back at her and I made like a rock on kind of face. <laughs> and someone walked by me and they're like, oh, what's going on in there? I'm like, oh, I'm kind of getting sucked in the ass with a metal dildo. Like you do. <laughs> So it was a. Uh, it really embodied her nature. She had so much fun with her kink and and her sexuality and exploring herself. But it was never a dull moment, and it was never. It was just always so fun and it made her so happy. And it was infectious. Like even if she was doing something that you were totally not into, you just had to watch just because it was. It was just so fun to watch her have fun. I think I want to pipe. This is Sanger, by the way. Hi, Shiva. Hi, Sanger. And I really think that she saw that same, like, joy, giddiness. Let's yeah. do this shit within you. Like, and she sort Aww. of kind of, I mean, I saw that happen with the two of you. Just she, like, there's an heir apparent thing going on there. Like, she really <laughs> dug how much you could just sink your teeth into shit and enjoyed the shit out of things. So... Like, that's something from a really far off observation, too. Just oh, not so even sweet. up I, in that shit. But I know. It, I appreciate um, that so much. Well, sure. You know, she, was, she was always so fun to be around. And it was, it was infectious. You just had to have fun with her. She's a go big or go home kind of a person. No, it, it really She's a go big or get like bigger. Anything came. Like, every time I walked by that door whenever she was playing there was always something really crazy <laughs> going on inside it was never boring <laughs> ain't that the truth i think we have a brace but- of women who have that kind of thing and that that's our like sisters in arms with her is that yeah fuck it we're gonna do something but you know she was totally. our, she was our fucking trail uh, our trailblazer in that way she really was. She really was, yeah. Really? No, I have, different... a, I have Tina here, too. I think Tina would like to share a fauna Please. story. Please. Hi, Tina. Hi. Wow, long time, Tina. Uh, nice to hear you guys again. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice to hear you, too. Please share. My favorite, my favorite fauna story was about three Halloweens ago, and she's dressed as a belly dancer. <laughs> uh, she's quarantine flogging. Very well. Uh, singing Phantom of the Opera. Very well. <laughs> and belly dancing. Very well. All at the same time. <laughs> and I'm sitting there watching her going, damn, she's got talent. <laughs> um, it was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. It's, I've never seen that much talent in one person. Um, so That's a lot of ethnic her, combination, too. It, it is. We're going to miss her desperately. Um Really going to miss her, too. I'm a DM, and she's been the head of the DMs um, for a long time, so we're going to miss her there, too. (sighs) Brother. Mm. Big shoes to fill. Yeah. Clown shoes, though. Clown shoes. Clown shoes. Yes, true. All right. I'm going to give the phone back. All right. Thanks, Tina. I'm... It's as I'm just going to share the look on her face when I was working on Sanger, when I was working on the first piece of your arm. <laughs> it came in. Yeah. And it totally sketched her out. <laughs> to, let, to let everybody just know, it was, that hold on. Shock. It was flesh removal, so people understand why this oh, might have sketched somebody out. Yes. 
Do you want to see this? Real. Should I flash it? Yeah, put it on the on the screen. So we did the second I, half. Yeah, she just made this scared look, <laughs> the shocked look, and then did a little dance with her feet before running out of the room and then coming back to look again. Yeah, she I remember like, her having that look before needles were done too. I hate yeah, it. I love it. Changed. I must have it. Yeah. <laughs> And it's a little dance that got me. She's like, oh, oh God, oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thanks for the call, sweetie. We'll see you later. Bye, darling. Bye. All right, bye. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Apparently, we have another caller. We have bye. a caller. Go back drinking. Have fun. All right, bye. bye. See you soon. I just want to say it just um, dawned on me that, you know, Fauna had social anxiety. Mm -hmm. she shared with me. And I think it's so amazing that a person who had such severe social anxiety has touched the lives of so many people. You would never know it. She no. always had a smile on her face and always was positive. Always interacting. I just, it suddenly struck me how many people she's touched for somebody who was kind of afraid of people. It's mm -hmm. really amazing. Yeah. So we do have another call. Next caller. And uh, I'll just warn you right now, caller, be quick. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a lot of time. It's Titty Tori. Titty Tori! Titty Tori! Hey, Tori. Wow. Hey. Oh, no, I just wanted to say hi to you ladies and, you know, share a little fauna moment, which I think two of you were there to see. Oh. Well, you know, her little fascination with Honey Boo Boo, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And I had to buy that little crown for her. Aww. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I just, she loved it so much. And I wanted to go and buy a bigger one for her. She really did. I she don't... loved that tiara. <laughs> oh, she loved it. That tiara is in her apartment think... with all of her really, really special things. Next Aww. to, like, where she has her prayer section. Mm -hmm. That tiara means a lot to her. Yeah. Yeah. It, it yeah. meant, and it meant that much to her because that, that area in her apartment was a very sacred area for her where she went mm -hmm. to be at peace and to meditate. And she kept things that, that had a lot of love contained mm -hmm. in them. Mm -hmm. And that was definitely one of those items. And Toria. Yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just glad that I was able to put that smile on her face when I gave it to her. And yeah. I think as, I'm hoping as still has that picture of her because it was priceless. So um, sometime after that, Fawn and I were talking and she um, she confided in me that that crown and then the adulation of the troop afterwards mm. um, were what made her so she didn't quit. Mm. Yeah. She was on the verge of quitting. Wow. And it was that moment that she realized, I can't quit. These people are counting on me. Um, so I don't know if you're aware of how powerful that was, but it was really oh, powerful. Oh my gosh, that means a lot. Cause yeah. Yeah. She she was one of the few people that I met when I got into the community, and she welcomed me with huge open arms, and I'll never forget that. She was our kink ambassador. <laughs> she really Definitely. was. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And I... I, like I said, I wish I could have gotten her the bigger crown because I was definitely looking for bigger and better for her. <laughs> go big or go home. That's the fawn away. Yeah. Exactly. It seems like it did just the trick. I mean, it seems like it was perfect no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Tori. Will we see you Friday? Friday. I'm going to try to make it out there, yeah. Okay. Look for an email. We're going to do something um, on Friday okay, as a, yeah, I'll as keep a an eye out. memorial. I love you guys. Love you too, We honey. love you too. So we, uh, Bye. Bye. I don't know what time it is. I can't see. Um, Friday is a party at Threshold called Femme Fatale. So this is a party that the troupe puts on every month. Um, the Dom Scouts troupe, yes. to which we have been, has, have been referred. Oh, Jesus. God. Yes. Yes. Um, thing so, deal from before. Yes. So, um, so in every month, different members of the troop um, step up to organize the class, to host the party. And Fana was always like, you got to stay until the end because you got to clean and you got to do this and you got to do that. And I know for her, it was a big deal to kind of let people take on those responsibilities. Two years ago, yeah. she did it all. She did it all. Beginning mm -hmm. to end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was a really big deal for her because, it, it, you know, it, so much of it was her baby. And so... Um, so we're gonna we're all gonna be there, threshold, um, in North Hollywood. Um, if Google threshold North Hollywood, you'll find it. You'll totally find it. <laughs> it's not it's not like it's a speakeasy. It's it's on Google Maps. Yeah. <laughs> and and 
<laughs> so the, hopefully, you know, most of the troop is going to be there and um, we'll have our sashes on. And um, for those that are listening and those that aren't in the troop, we'll have our sashes on and we're going to put a black satin ribbon across the Dom Scouts um, uh, embroidered badge mm -hmm. because that's appropriate. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to go find ribbon. <laughs> Probably in San Jose, but I'm going to find ribbon. There's ribbon. It's it happens. It's okay. I it, bet As has ribbon. <laughs> As has ribbon, but she uses that to to do yeah, her ribbony things. To, uh, that would be the like As ribboning me with needles. A year ago. Um, so we have a, just a few minutes left. I just I really want to say that you know we talked a lot about Fauna and about you know what kind of a vibrant, jubilant woman she was. Fauna was complex like any human being is. She had her highs, but as high as her highs went, she had her lows. Um, and what I want everybody out there to understand is that we're all complete and whole people. And just because you look at somebody and they're smiling constantly doesn't mean that at some point they're not having some kind of pain. So sometimes we become very consumerist in our relationships where we realize what we get from the other side, but we forget to give back. And if there's one thing that I've learned from Fauna is that it's really important to give back. And if this isn't a reminder, I don't know what is. So that's me being sappy. Fuck you. I could still be a sadist yeah. and be sappy. No one, no one said that you couldn't be sappy. <laughs> and nobody no said, said it was poorly stated. It was beautiful. On that, Sap on that thought, the thing that kind of kept... The first thought I had when I heard the news this morning was that I remembered that she had written this really, like, personal and vulnerable journal entry a couple mm -hmm. days ago. And I remember the comments, and they were just, they just showered her with so much love and support. And I just kept thinking, she left, knowing that she was loved. She left, like, completely and 100% aware of how much people actually loved her. If she didn't know, she knew now. You know, because we came in droves and told her. <laughs> that day I was telling you earlier, and, and as knows, I, I'd, I'd happened to be in Hollywood in the parking lot near her house, and I thought, I won't call her because I'm sure she's sleeping. Because that post was like, I gotta get to sleep. And, and uh, I saw her, and we went back to her apartment, which is a couple blocks away, and we spent a couple hours chatting. And, and I, I thought, I didn't call her because I didn't want to wake her up. And here she is putting your arms around me like no big like no big fucking deal right but yeah left uh, totally she did she knew she was she knew yep. i'm gonna try to actually say something <laughs> with that and get through it lizzie um, hi lizzie <laughs> hi <laughs> um so i demoed bottomed for her for the last class that she did which was humiliation class and it was a really big deal for me because that's mm. always been like i am on my hard limit list and she was so it was because it was fauna that i agreed to do it and at the end of the class the last thing she had me do was get on my knees and kiss her boot mm, that's and of everything i did that night that wasn't humiliating i was happy to be down there and later she told me the look on my face when i did that she was like <laughs> and I, that's that's how I saw Fauna. I would kiss her boot anytime Aww. I saw her again. I didn't make it. Sorry. <laughs> I, you took the whole room with you. I'm so nice. No. So, um, um, if you didn't know Fauna, be sad because you should have. <laughs> um, I can't tell you how many people I, I, I saw on FET or that message or text or whatever and they said I only met her once but I really wanted to know her that or I just really to remember her. her. <laughs> you know, it, it, it only took one time for them to meet her, for them to make an impact, for, to have an impact made on their life by her. Okay. Can We're we done. also just say a quick note of support to um, to her boy? Yeah, I mean, he's being taken. I don't want to put his name out there. No, but. no, we don't have to, but I just want to um, say that people are thinking right. of you if you... Real quick, we got to wind up. Uh, wind up. We got to wind up. Wind um, up. 
We are on the Twitter at Kinkalectual. I'm at Insidious Muse. I'm at Service Lab. She's Audax Oceana. Who are you on Twitter? Bert, I'm not on Twitter, but I'm on FET. On Bird Fet. on the Brim. Bird on the Brim. Lizzie Land on FET. Lizzie Land on FET. And Lady Maleficent. Lady Maleficent on FET. So, um, we'll be funnier next time, I promise. Where? Bye. Good night. <laughs>